Zoom it up. All right. So, in today's episode for how to animate, we're going to be going over building up scenes and uh, parallax background animation. So, as you can see here, I've got a basic canvas set up, usually how I always do it, 1920 by 1080 at 60 FPS. But, as you can clearly see, uh, there's not much to work with here. Basically, it's just Mario on a red line. This red line right here, usually used just as an indicator that this is flatland. This is where Mario's original uh, height position is. That way I don't get it messed up all the time in animation. So, building a scene is pretty easy. But if you want to be a bit more complex with it, you can have added background layers, different types of scenery within the, you know, the stage, like uh, extra pipes, extra shrubs, like clouds, coin boxes, stuff like that. But it doesn't just have to be for Super Mario Brothers specifically, you could do it with uh, other games such as like Sonic the Hedgehog with like uh, more flowers, uh, background movement for the water. Anyways. We're going to start by setting down a foundation for what our scene is going to look like. So I'm just going to unlock this here. Just delete this little red line, because then I'm going to paste this block. And if you remember from one of the previous episodes, all we have to do is turn off the loud smoothing, change it to lossless, and bam, it's no longer ugly. So I'm going to try and be pixel perfect with this as I can possibly be. I don't care too much about the background and all that, you know. There. So now it's just Mario on a big old floating block in basically the void. And it doesn't look too great there. Speaking of which, we're actually going to place the blocks on a different layer. Move that layer underneath Mario, because he's on the foreground layer. He's supposed to be above pretty much everything else. So right now, as you can see, one block. Not too great. So what we're going to do, Control c v copy-paste that and just align it close to this other block as possible. And then just keep doing that so you have a large set of these blocks. And there we go. So now, Mario has a bit of ground to stand on, but it just looks pretty damn boring right now. All we have right now is background and Ground blocks. And that's not too interesting of a stage. Now, we're gonna go ahead, make another layer, put it underneath the blocks layer, and just paste in some stage elements that we're gonna wanna add into our animation. Alright, so now that we've pretty much got all our stage elements pasted into animate, we can pretty much put these anywhere we want to, depending on what we want in our stage. So let me try and build something real quick. Not too good at it, but. I don't know, maybe I can pull something out. And there we go. So right here, you can see we just have a nice little scene. I don't really do too much with it, so I don't really have an animation idea for this. But yeah, you could probably put a few enemies in here, kinda like this. So, I added a couple few enemies to make it seem a bit more livelier. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it to building a scene. All it really takes is thinking up something that you want to do with this. So for example, I could have probably have Mario scavenge for coins around here, have some of these pipes be entrances to have, probably have this pipe right here be an entrance to get an area with a bunch of coins, this be the exit, has to jump over the piranha plants, Goomba, something like that. Could add a bit more coins up here, maybe a 50 coin down here that's basically bait to just get Mario down here. There are coins all in here. Really, just building a scene is all up to what you want to do with it. Here, I basically just built a scene off of I wanted to make a little tutorial type thing, so I may as well make it look pretty. And when building a scene, 
You don't have to follow what I did by making everything all weird like this, making it rotate on an axis and stuff like that. You can basically do whatever. You can still rotate and stuff, but I'm just saying you don't really have to follow it if you want to. You can just keep it like a normal Mario Brothers level. Alright, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this to make an animated background element. So what I already did is I selected basically everything in here and converted it all into just one big old symbol. But now we're just going to focus on animating different parts of this scene. But right now I'm just going to animate this Goomba right here. However many frames this Goomba is for entire entire walk cycle lifespan, that's how many frames everything else is going to have to be. Don't be afraid if you think you're adding a bit too many frames. Never hurt to have that perfect look that you want. But right now, what I'm just trying to do is I'm trying to get the Goomba to just a good walking speed. As you can see here, kind of changed. I'm just going to want to set it to the frame that it ended off on with the tween. Okay, now we're going to want it to go back to its original position, so we're just going to want to create another tween. I'm just going to copy the first position that it was in. Go to the end. Pretty much just enter a specific amount of frames that we want. Maybe, I don't know, that many. Paste it. If you need to, you can always turn on the looping option. That way you can see if it looks good or not. Okay. So as you can tell, you can probably tell, there's a little pause, and that's because it ends off on the same exact frame that the first one does. So we're just gonna go ahead and fix that. There we go. Now that the Goomba is complete, we can go ahead and move on to other things. Maybe start working with the piranha plants over here in the pipe. So it'd be pretty weird for the piranha plants to be coming out both at once. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna have one in the pipe while I animate the other coming out. It'll be alternating. Alright, so same thing for the Goomba. We're just gonna try and figure out good enough cycle for the piranha plant to be on. We'll have this piranha plant out first. This one should be pretty simple. Wait! Then, I'm just gonna do the same exact thing. Copy this. Go. Do the same thing. Convert to frame by frame animation and then remove. So, see, that's a problem. Always watch out for that. There we go. Hmm. It's a bit weird. I will say, try and fix this up. Look like a proper piranha plant. Okay, I'll bring it back to its original position. All right here. Right. Don't forget about this. Okay, should be good. Then we'll move on to our next piranha plant. Normal one. Alright. So now, we have the two piranha plants going through the pipes. And that Goomba doing its thing. So now, we're going to focus on this Goomba over here. It shouldn't be too hard, because it does go off-screen. You know, it probably wouldn't work. See, when working on things like these, you'll notice that some things might not work, because this Goomba will have to travel all the way over to this pipe in order to go back to its original position. But we're not really going to do that, so we'll just remove that Goomba entirely. We'll still have this cheap cheap and the Koopa Trooper right here. So instead, we'll focus on those guys. This one might be a toughie. Not too sure, but maybe not. Just do like we normally do. We'll try and do it on the same frames as the Goomba, but I'm not too sure that will work. Okay, so for the Koopa, since it 
can't just do as the Goomba does. We'll have to actually flip it around, which will in turn do something weird to its angle. But not to worry. You know what? Just put it back on its original angle. Quick adjustments. And then go back to animating. Again, just flip it around. Make some adjustments. And just animate. Alright, let's see how this looks. Yeah. But we'll have to do something completely different for this Koopa. Because it's slowing down, being up. I don't really like that too much, so I'm just gonna go ahead and move this move these frames as well. Still gonna try and get it to be in the same time spent as the Goomba's walk cycle is. Okay, well, this one's gonna be a bit of a special case. We still want it to go back to the original position, but it's still going to have to be facing this way. So, in order to fix that, we'll have this as a little bit of a reference to where the Koopa is going to end up. Yeah, okay. That'll work. Just delete that, right between, and then set it and forget it. Yeah, there we go. Alright, now the last thing we want to do is the cheap cheap. And it'd be a bit weird animating the cheap cheap. Um it's not gonna be the last thing we animate. The last thing we're gonna animate is probably gonna be the water. We'll just get our water. Matter of fact, let's animate our water first. Put your symbol inside of itself, copy, paste, put it on a new layer, and then you're just gonna wanna make a tween. Uh not the water going too fast. Matter of fact, just set it to the 150 that everything else is on. Just wanna something kind of like that, basically. This is something that I do want to change. Them. You probably already guessed what I am creating here. Just basically, I'm gonna give it a little wave simulation type thing. Not too sure if this will work. So, all right, we'll see if this works in the long run. Just to make sure it looks fine, we're gonna go ahead and a little looping. Hmm. Okay. This should work. That is exactly what we wanted. I remember thinking, but GMG, what are you going through all this effort for? It's just water. Shut up. I like to put the extra effort in the things, you know? Or the extra mile. When it comes to my animations, I usually love to go the extra mile. That way I can brag about how I went the extra mile. Always a pride thing. And you know, pride cometh before the fall, but it's a bitch ass. There we go. Now our water's animated. Now, we are going to animate our cheap cheap. Alright, so cheap cheap movements. A bit unconventional. We don't just want it to go... We don't want it to go straight like the Koopa and Goomba do. We actually want it to float a bit, you know, since it's in water and it's swimming. So we'll make another simple. We don't want 88 frames for ourselves. So that way it's at least at the even number.
our cheap cheap finish along with our water and pretty much the rest of this tea. There we go. Isn't it beautiful? Alright, so now that that's done, we basically have all of our background elements finished. So now we'll just add in um, as many frames as we want, I suppose. Because this is just gonna be a background element. So, with a background element, what we're gonna wanna do is actually tint it. Not too much. You might be thinking, DMG, this looks like garbage. It's showing everything. Yeah, you're right. It is showing everything. So, let's make it not do that. Anyways, now that it's been extended, we're gonna want to move it to that background layer. Duh. And then... Basically just make another foreground. This time we won't go into it, like, at all. We won't- we don't really care anymore, we just want to get into the parallax part. Oh! There we go. Might have seen some other animators do something just like this. That's a pretty common thing for them to do. Kind of in, like, Super Mario World and stuff like that. Gives off the illusion that there's still more stage back there. In order to give off the effect that it's moving, there are some things that you gotta know. First off, the layer in the back. The layer most in the back is going to move the slowest. The layers closer to the front are going to move the fastest. So you get that? This one, this top layer right here, is going to move the fastest. This background animation layer right here, that we had made, it's going to move at a medium pace. And the background, the, the sky and everything, it is going to move the slowest. You gotta keep that in mind when you just when you're animating parallax background. The farther away it is, the slower it's gonna go. Oh, let's get into the parallax animation already. I think we've sold long enough. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and move. So we're gonna move this first. Uh I'd say about 60 frames. Maybe move it. About this much. Okay. And then this one. I'm gonna move about that much. And then this. About that much. And so, giving your animation stuff like this, parallax backgrounds, with animated moving backgrounds and things, uh, really helps to bring it to life, you know? It doesn't have it be all bland and stale, like some animations that I've seen. Not naming names, but you know who you are. And so, if you want to see what that looks like, just this by itself, then you can always feel free to add a VCAM. Uh, wherever you want to put it. Say, maybe right here. There we go. Giving off the illusion that it's moving a bit slowly. That's pretty much parallax background. Just movement of your foreground, your background, and your backmost ground. I don't really know what to call it. But yeah, it's as I said, pretty much gives life to this. Doesn't make it look boring with just the normal background like this. As you can see, it looks okay. But adding this just really gives it a touch of depth. And you could even add more if you wanted. You could just keep building these as many as you want, just keep adding to it if you feel like it adds more depth. Don't go too far, you know? You might have like 50 of these layers, uh, your <laughs> Adobe Animate crashing at that point. But yeah, pretty much all I'm gonna teach for this episode, so... Oh, but first, let's uh, preview what it looks like. Looks pretty dang good. Maybe just add Mario walking in on here. As a little intro to something. Maybe he's walking in. I don't know. Joyful music. Then all of a sudden it stops. And then something happens. You know. But yeah. That's pretty much all I got to teach for this week's episode. So. Yeah. Anyways. See you guys.